Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much uh, for being here uh, with me. It's a great pleasure to be here and to see you all and to see this kind of enthusiasm in numbers at a floriculture event. It's very, very exciting. Uh, and I think that it's reflective about the excitement that's going on in the floor culture industry today. Um, as you know, it is an innate part of being human to love flowers. And I love the part that we are growing American flowers and we're getting them to markets and we're getting them in the hands of people. So, you know, hand, uh, uh, hats off to all of you and the fantastic hard, incredibly hard work that you're doing. Um, there is a handout in front of you uh, that's got a little bit of information to refer to in a little bit. On the back side of that handout is a schedule of the year 2016 um, and educational offerings that are going on at MSU Coastal R&E Center in Biloxi. Come see us and uh, check out our website, co uh, coastal.msstate.edu. There's also a little card, and it's a postage paid card. As a special listening extension, it's very important to me to have feedback from you, even though I've crossed the state line uh, today uh, to uh, deliver this program. I am really interested in what you've got to say, because it's extremely valuable. Particularly question number three. And if you have any other comments or questions, write them in the margins. And you can either leave this here or drop it off in the mail. It's postage paid. So please do that for us because, like we say, um, in extension, uh, we are a part of Mississippi State University and we're state employees. And we want to know how to help promote floriculture and how to make it stronger and better, uh, not only in the state, but in the region and in the country. So that's that part. And um, I want to tell you all a little something about this program. It's, um, it's for beginners. This program is completely for beginners. So um, maybe it will help you to think about something that you haven't thought of before. Uh, perhaps uh, you have done fewer than five weddings. If you've done four weddings, three weddings, or if you're thinking of doing weddings, that's perfect. I'd like us to sort of start off at that ground level today in terms of explanation. Now, if you've done more than that, and I found out over the past 24 hours that there are a lot of seasoned uh, professionals here who have done <coughs> many weddings and been involved in floriculture for decades. So that's one of the dicey things that we have about teaching large groups like from industry like this. Our levels are all the way across. So there we are, but we've got to start somewhere. I want to encourage you to entertain the thought of getting your feet wet in wedding work. And remember the phrase that goes with this program today, everyone started somewhere. Everyone started somewhere. Last night there was a great question at the Q&A uh, slash cocktail party next door. And you know, a little bit of alcohol really kind of helps to shake the inhibitions. And we were talking about floristry education. And most of us, including myself, were educated on the job. On the job. Um, I started off uh, with a uh, working permit at the age of 15, working at a garden center in my hometown of Ashtabula, Ohio. And the company I worked for is the Happy Cricket, no longer there. But it was an old gas station with great old fixtures and glass doors, and it was made into a plant shop. So this is the 1970s. Macrame hangers, Ingrid plastic containers, and pothos plants. <laughs> Ate it up then and would eat it up today because good design and good material is classic. And that's what I hope to impart with you today. Go for the classical items. So um, I worked there from age 15, picking up trash in the parking lot and washing my boss's 1975 red Corvette. She was a hot mama, and she still is. <laughs> and I did that for several years, but we weren't doing floral design. And the colors and the patterns and the fragrances really appealed to me. And I know, it'll, I know that I share that with all of you because you have that same love for really well-grown floriculture crops, 
as well as well-made floral design possessing all the elements and principles. So I couldn't find anyone to hire me, so I went to the county seat and I got a permit and I started a flower shop in the basement of my parents' home when I was a sophomore in high school. And I did the corsages for every kid at Edgewood Senior High School for two or three years. Um, and I started designing wedding flowers. Silk flowers were very popular then, and they still are. And I did that, and I kind of learned as I went, trial and error. And that's the style that we learn floristry. Of course, Mississippi State University is, is a little bit different than that, and, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that. Um, but my program is going to focus on some of the broader issues to pump you up about accepting wedding work, and again, to think about some of these important issues before they become pitfalls for you. Um, Rita's program, Rita Anders' program, coming up next, oh my gosh, St. Rita Anders, and the fantastic uh, floriculture product that she brought. She, she and I talked on the phone, and I think we were both driving somewhere in our various jobs, and, and uh, she said, Jim, you know, what do you need? And I said, we need the flowers, some flowers. And, um, and she said, well, how many? I said, well, like maybe four little buckets. <laughs> so, uh, you know, pretty, pretty marvelous. Um, now, I've been talking to you a little bit here about this idea of floriculture and growing crops. At Mississippi State, undergraduate students can earn a degree in horticulture. Within horticulture, there are several different curriculum tracks they can elect to follow. One of them is turf grass. Um, another one is fruits and vegetables. Another one of them is ornamental horticulture slash floriculture. And the fourth one is floral management. Now note that I tell you the, uh, the, the title of it is floral management. It's not floral design. It's floral management. Because it's not an art degree. It's not really a business degree. It's a Bachelor of Science degree in horticulture. But when you think about that, floral design is art and science and business, and it will kick your behind as a degree program. And a lot of young people that get enrolled in it that think, oh, my parents told me to pick a major, they either love it or hate it. And that's one of the nice things is they auto-select into it, and if they do well early on, they, they continue on. And I'm proud to say that we've had really some of the best florists in the nation graduate from our program and go on to stellar degrees in brick and mortar flower shops, studio florists, um, product development. The world is your oyster. And I feel like if you're in your 20s and 30s, get the limelights, get the willow, grow that stuff. We're going to talk a little bit about that and get that ready. Maybe you'll see things in a different light as I move on through the program. So let's go ahead and move on and talk about this effect that I want to present to you, and it's called win-win. Ain't nothing good in this world unless you win and I win, if we're working together. Because if you're winning and I'm losing, it's not good for me. And that's a part of the business world, and that's the transaction of a wedding consultation. So I think that this phrase sums it up. And remember that good reputations are developed over years, not just over the first wedding that you've done, which is really important, but if you fail miserably and you still want to go on, don't worry. Learn from your mistakes and keep on going. Build a solid style and your customers will follow. It's a promise. Build a solid style and they will follow. Well, what do I mean by style? Hard to define. I have certain things that I like to do and ways that I like to guide a bride during a consultation, but yours are going to be different. And over time, you will, be, you will become well known for your own style. Of course, you want to minimize error. And my predecessor at Mississippi State was the incredibly talented, stellar Professor Ralph Null. Anyone in the room ever hear of Mr. Ralph Null as a floriculture professor? 
Well, it stands to reason it'd just be a handful because of the fact we're in a grower school. If we were in a floristry school, you guys would be charging the stage now. The guy is absolutely incredible. And I was his TA, teaching assistant, for the last year that he was on faculty. And I tell you what, it was like being with two high school students the last week of school. We had a great time. We traveled around. We learned a lot. I picked up a lot of great teaching habits from him, and that mentoring is so important and shadowing folks. I've said to Tannis Clifton, can I just come to the farm for like a day or two? And she's like, I'll put you to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so that shadowing is such a great way to learn. And Mr. Null had a great expression about doing wedding flowers that I think is a good one to remember. Do, designing wedding flowers is easy as long as it's on time and perfect. <laughs> on time and perfect. So if you're late chronically all the time, you might want to find another profession. The other thing too is it's detail oriented. And it can be very heavy detail oriented or light detail. I'm a light detail guy. And you'll see why as we go through and talk about some of these other things. So, strategies. Let's take a look at eight important points to remember. Um, because if you are up all night designing flowers, after the first wedding that you do, and after the second wedding, and into the third, you're doing it wrong. You're going to burn out, you're going to estrange yourself from your husband, wife, partner, family, and you're going to get very tired, you're going to get worn down, it's going to affect you psychologically and otherwise. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't stay up all night designing wedding flowers because that's not a win-win for anyone involved. You want your career to be so fun that you can't get wait to get to work in the morning. Think about that. Is your career so fun you can't wait to get to work? I can tell you, mine always has been. When I wake up in the morning, I put on my Sono system, and it's blaring Eliza Minnelli singing, Yes, I can. Yes, I will. Thank you very much. Motivate yourself. And when something seems hard, go for it. You know, we want to keep ourselves in an area of living where success is possible but not certain. Success is possible but not certain. Because when you're green, you grow. And when you're ripe, you rot. Now let's look at these pink <laughs> You're going to qualify the bride. It's a business, not a hobby. Employees. I am the creative source. How much should I charge? Sell color and theme. Freshness post-design impact. Any other questions as we get this information down? You haven't shown us anything yet, Jim, hell no. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. The uh, first thing I'm going to tell you about is qualifying the client. Okay, so these are our eight. Qualifying the client. Have you ever been asked before, whether in person or usually it's an email or on the telephone, how much is a wedding? How much is a wedding? Well, it depends. Um, lots that you have to do when you start to qualify your client. You have to get that client ready to talk to you because time is money. First of all, you're growing floriculture product. You don't have any time. You don't have any time. You would like to be able to just eat a meal at a table. <laughs> so allow your website to collect some data. And you've got a good website, right? Oh. Okay, you know what? You keep on telling yourself, I'm going to get to that. So your site says, coming soon. You know, that's BS. Because you know what? Coming soon means 10, 
nine, eight. And if you haven't updated it, it's time for you to generate some funds and put it into that. That's what I do for my public speaking gigs. I hire it done because I don't want to go through and learn those codes, but I want to send my information to a fabulous designer. Uh, and I say website designer. He said, Jim, what do you like? We put together something. Check it out, jamesdelprince.com. And you'll see what I'm talking about in that. And my blogs are a couple of sentences, because nobody wants to read that. I'm thinking. And I put up one picture a month that refreshes itself. And I take one or two days to shoot everything on this, because I don't have the time to learn the other camera and to download. I, I want to sit down and have lunch with a glass of wine with my partner on a Saturday. You know, so think about that, think about that. So allow your website to collect the data. There are lots of florists out there who do this. Google them, there's a long list, and I'm not gonna give it to you. Find out who they are, and you'll see, they ask questions, and then they've got the box to say, send me your answers to this. You're getting people to take that first step, you see? You're bringing them into the sale with open arms, and that's awesome information that you can have as they come in. You're going to find out who they are, a little bit about them, some of their basic demographics, and if they're just shopping around and they're trying to learn and fish, they probably won't go that far. Um, they can deliver you information like their email, snail mail, Pinterest boards, cell phone numbers. Now, when it comes to this Pinterest, you know, sort of issue, it's a really awesome thing. I think I find I look at it almost every day. But I don't want to see her board. No way. And I don't want to talk about it forever because the consultation needs to be much shorter than that. I like the idea that some of my colleagues in the floral industry use, which is bring me hard copies of what you want me to see. Ah. Then it's going to force that bride to make hard copies, and she will probably have fewer of them. So it's going to get her to eliminate some of this work. Your provided handout um, gives you some talking points for your website or as a handout booklet to distribute at wedding shows. So how to choose your wedding flowers there. You, you know, take this and make it your own. We are a florist you can trust. Here's why. We grow our own. It's fresh, it's colorful. We use organic practices. We're near all the great stuff about your company that makes you unique. And so on and so forth. I'm not gonna go through that, that's yours to take home. When you are ready for that consultation, you want a quiet place. You sell them what you want to sell, not what they want. <laughs> I saw this centerpiece, Dr. Del Prince, and it was this ball, and it had this, and I'll say like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it stood like this, and they put it on that. I'll say like, you know what, that's not going to work, and here's why. But here's what I'm going to do for you that's even better. Bam. Exceed the expectations by selling expertly. Selling what you want to sell. Is the wedding pick, picked up or delivered? And think about that. If you want folks coming to you to pick up their wedding flowers, you get Saturday night off. But all of those high-end event designers that have $10,000 worth of glassware in a ballroom three times the size, mm -mm. and they've got a lot of people working for them. So think about what you want. It's hard to make a packaged wedding that one size fits all. I've never really been able to do that as much as I wanted. But by the same token, you can sell things that people pick up, and they can pick it up in a cardboard box with some paper around it. We accept MasterCard, Visa, American Express, and Greenbacks. <laughs> Love the money. Some people like, um, some floral designers like to take their notes on paper. Some like to do it with an iPad. Some will have a computer in front of them. You gotta hybridize that and make it work for you. But, um, ramifications for what you sell and design, you have to make time for marketing. You must make time for marketing in your schedule. And I just love marketing. And so I find I make time for that more than sometimes the stuff I think I'm supposed to be doing. But you know, there you go. When people come to the consultation, tell them to bring one or two other people with them and no one else. I don't want your sister's mother-in-law and three kids whose diapers need changed. 
one or two other people and tell them that ahead of time. Because if you start having a crowd, everybody's got an opinion. I think you should use the hot pink. Well, I think you should use the orange. Well, I hate you. You know, and you get into all of these arguments. We need a deposit. We need a deposit at the time of booking the wedding. And you have to decide what is appropriate. Many times in professional forestry, I'm hearing from my colleagues, we want half down, 50% down. But that doesn't necessarily work in all markets. You see, Del Prince is not going to give you a formula here because it's not a science. It's more of an art. So if we exchange some money, then it's telling me, I now will be designing your wedding flowers. And then I'm going to give you the terms of payment. I personally recommend to everyone that the wedding is paid four weeks prior to the wedding, an entire month, an entire month. I like my money up front because what's really great about it is to my bride I'm working with, you're all paid. All you got to do is be pretty and I'm going to give you the world's best wedding flowers on your day and your mama will cry. How pretty these are. I do not want the, the, I, I will not accept someone saying, well, we'll pay you when you show up. Not acceptable. And you know what? Sometimes you'll find in wedding floral design, very rarely, if you're a straight shooter, very rarely will you lose a sale. And very rarely will you turn away a sale. But I've had friends, uh, top florists in the nation, who will, after a consultation, say to a bride, I'm just not feeling the chemistry and the artistry to deliver what you really want. But thank you so much for your gracious time with me and your backing away from them. Red flags. One red flag is a bad one. Two is really bad. Three, get out of there. Get out of there. Additions, deletions, subject to additional charge. Think about that. And you may want to build that in. Some florists do say if you've got an additional charge for your wedding flowers, or if you have an addition to your wedding, like, uh, I want to change the color of all the bridesmaids to this. They will say, depending on the amount of time, you can make one change. But today, we are so connected. Facebook, Facebook Messenger, um, Instant Messenger, and email, and tweeting, tin can with a string shouting, and they will talk to you constantly, and you're going to have to limit that, because it's confusing. And that makes some, that's something that you need to get up front. And I do that even with my clientele in Mississippi. Don't call me on that office phone, because I'm going to take that thing into email me. I prefer that because it allows me to compose a message. Cancellation policy. It's good to have one. In all the years I've been designing professionally, had one. The night before the wedding, the groom said, don't want to do this. <laughs> Was it canceled? Heck no. I had a cooler full of flowers. They were devastated. I just let them vent when they <coughs> called me. And, and they said, we don't know what to do. And I said, take a while and think about it. Because I'm like, it's your life, not mine. <laughs> and they called me back and they said, we're having a party tomorrow. And it's just going to be what it's going to be. And it's going to be a damn open bar and you're invited. <laughs> <laughs> and all the flowers were there. Now that's a win-win. That's a win-win. You know, they really made lemonades out of lemon on that. And it was probably to the best effect of the bride and groom. All right, so let's move on here. No longer a hobby, it's a business. No more saying, I do weddings because it makes me feel good. Okay, how wonderful for you. But um, we really need to move on from that. It's good to kind of learn a little bit on your daughter's <laughs> wedding or your friend's son's wedding. Those are all good things. We've all done it in our past. But after that, you're in business and you got to tighten up and toughen up. Take care to see the delineation, develop and write out policies. And this will be an ongoing thing for you. It won't be perfect when you first do it, but start, start, and publish them on your website and follow them. And they don't have to be cruel sounding, like if you mess with me, I will punch you out. No, it needs to be friendly, but it needs to be firm. 
Let's move on to employees. <sighs> your employees are your greatest investment. Their greatest investment, they're greater than the, the, the hard, hard new products that you use and the machinery because they all need some level of training. But odds are you don't need a designer. Odds are. And it may be, but for the most part, you probably need cleaners, designers, marketers. See, I hire a marketer. She does my website. Very affordable. And I just love what she does. Now, when it comes to photography, I'm going to freshen all of that up because I'm getting older. I got the gray glasses because it goes with the gray hair. So I get the best photographer that I know. She gives me a great package, and it's affordable. You know, it really, really works. So hire the people to do the good jobs that they do so you can do what you want to do, which I bet is grow flowers and design flowers. You probably don't need a designer, but you need somebody to schlep and clean up and to pick up. Well, then that's who you get. Many of my friends in the floral industry will hire guys who are in high school because on weekends they're looking to make some cash and if you tell them, I want you to go over there, I want you to take all this stuff, I want you to put it in those boxes and put it in the van. A high school guy who's worth his salt is going to get it done. But a designer is going to say, <laughs> and it's not getting done. Good employees are rare and you knew that. Many successful florists work by themselves. And friends of mine who are also in academia <coughs> freelance and do wedding flowers. I was talking with some of them and they said their particular range of doing flowers is up to, and you got to be careful with pricing because as you know the market's going to be different no matter where you are. But a friend of mine said once I start to get past $2,000 or $2,500, that wedding is so large I need to hire someone else and my margins shrink. So I like to do smaller weddings by myself that have this, 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 some formulas that are going on up here that she probably couldn't tell us but come out and her work are there and I think that's brilliant and she makes it work for her. The design ramifications for what you can do by yourself and what you can sell are important. Not getting into necessarily a lot of props and not being everything to everyone because you feel like that's the right answer and it's not. I am the creative source. That's not me right now. That's you speaking. I am the creative source. I am the source for your wedding flowers. And they are fresh, and they are colorful, and they're fantastic. Make it happen to you. Avoid being swayed to create something that you feel like, I don't know how to do this. When they come in with something, and it's like some kind of twisted up, raunchy, crazy mechanic with like eight dancing girls on a maypole. And her budget is $1,000. No. That's just not going to work. But here's what I can do for your budget, because you're a darling girl. And I'm going to make you and your wedding a beautiful memory for the rest of your life with your $1,000 budget. So we're not going to do the make wall, but we're going to do this. Win-win. Ah, I'm making money. She's getting beautiful flowers. Um, this thing about props is they have to be picked up after the wedding. Now, good and bad things are going on in floristry today for us, and that is the floral designs are really easy to make for the most part. A lot of things are so easy, it's shameful. And a lot of really accomplished floral designers are looking at social media and decrying the horrible work that's going on. Not because it's easy, but because there are not design principles being adhered to. It can be great floral product, but the arranging is bad. You know, the design work is bad. It lacks rhythm, it lacks balance, and so many other design principles. However, all that being said, if you have these props at a reception, do you really want to go back to pick them up? I don't. I love the idea of centerpieces that she can give away. And I do not want to go back to get anything. I don't like to rent anything. If I do, I like to subcontract it. Ficus trees from a great grower in South Mississippi who will put lights in them or just put moss in a basket and deck the place out. And he's awesome. He'll go get it. And I could go out to dinner on Saturday night and then go to church on Sunday morning because I'm awake and happy.
How much should I charge for that? It's on everyone's minds and it should be, but it's a difficult, one of the most difficult questions to answer. The answer is whatever the market will bear, you guys, whatever the market will bear. And you need to stop looking at the retail level of something being, I have this, this is $1.05, this is $2.35 when I put them together. Yeah, but the thing of it is, it's not gonna be a flower and a leaf it's the groom's boutonniere, and he is the apple of her eye. He is the most wonderful man in her life next to her dad. How much is a groom's boutonniere? I think she, I think she needs to be shelling out 500 for this guy. He's awesome. Now, am I going to get 500? All I need is one of those weddings per year. We're going to Paris. <laughs> yeah. But the reality of it is, it's probably lower. And as you intermingle in the floral industry, and I say the retail floral, the design world, just like what you're brilliantly doing this, this, these two days, you'll learn a lot from other people who are willing to share. These folks with the association are golden angels. And don't ever forget that. Get your memberships in, contribute, be a part of this, because you're not going to you're not going to be able to find this kind of love um, everywhere you go. And it is parallel in the floral uh, floral design area too. Um, don't give your product away, and you're nice people, and you're salt of the earth, and you've got great flowers, and it took you 35 cents to raise, you know, this. Don't give it away. Value is placed on the emotional impact of wedding flowers. Value is placed on the emotional impact of the flowers. Case in point, great friend of mine, Todd Sweden from Russellville, Arkansas. When he sets up a wedding, the, the first thing that he does is create the altar design. And he doesn't do weddings that are, you know, very small. He generally does, you know, larger, beautiful weddings because he commands that place because he's got the clientele to do it in Russellville, Arkansas and nearby environs. The first thing he does is he gets his crew, gets into the church, he builds a magnificent floral design by himself, you know, a sheet on the floor, cut flowers nearby, and brings in music, classical music. So when the bride arrives, you know, the bridal party, they start to arrive early. Guys arrive early, we get their boutonnieres on. This is early. This is a couple hours before the wedding, three, maybe four hours. But you're coming in, you're designing, and you're creating that beautiful floral arrangement and the bride comes in and they always look so strange because like they're in jeans but their hair is done with a veil and they're like and then you've got the mother of the bride and you know she's on so many pills by now you know she just wants everyone happy she's been strung out for 12 months and she comes in and I think it was best put by a really talented florist uh, friend of mine from Picayune, Mississippi, who said, I just don't feel good after I've done a wedding unless I see happy tears from someone. And you know, I think I've kind of gotten that too. You know, like, cry. You know, you're happy. But I, I, I want to see some. And you know, the mother of the bride comes in, and when they say, You've outdone yourself, you know, that's what we want. What is, what is the retail value of you outdone yourself? You know? We're on a budget. Da, da, da. Tell me what your budget is. How much do you want to spend? $500? Okay, then that will get you this. But don't ever assume that you know what's in that purse or wallet because you don't. And just because somebody looks impoverished doesn't mean they don't own a gold mine. <laughs> And that they won't come up with buku bucks for beautiful wedding for their son or daughter. Okay, um, now a little formula that I am going to give you um, in working with wedding flowers. And this is not across the board, but many florists, brick and mortar flower shops, traditional flower shops, like to use a four to one formula, which means I pay a dollar for it, I sell it for four. Four to one. Okay, so every stem of flowers that I'm putting into an arranger, if I bought from a wholesale florist, when I go to a wholesale florist to get ready for my workshops, every bunch of flowers I pick up, I think 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 40 bucks. A bunch of status, it's 10 bucks because I want that quince too. 
Yeah. So 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, everything's, you know, kind of like a dollar, a dollar a piece. So now that bunch of flowers is 40. And there could be additional charges too if I have a setup. And I like to be there just before the bride goes down the aisle on her daddy's arm, take her train and <coughs> fluff it. You know, you give it a good pop. And it spreads out today. Of course, everything is like this. I don't know how they walk. But, you know, <laughs> this sort of thing. Because think about it. I'm a floral design specialist. I'm going to be the last one to see her walk down because her mother can't do that for her and her nanny can't do that for her. So if I could pop that and see them go, then I hightail it back to the reception and make sure everything is picture perfect. I'm decorating the cake with flowers, whatever I need to do to make sure everything is perfectly pristine and beautiful. But that costs, that costs. And if I have someone else with me, man, does it cost? Because I like to buy my assistant lunch and dinner. And shoot, if we're doing something in New Orleans, I like to go out. You know, and, and these sort of things cost a lot of money. Um, don't feel like you have to give your client a, a price, a retail price, right up front at the end of the consultation. Not necessary. Buy yourself some time, but deliver what you promise. Tell them, I'm going to have this to you in two business days. No more than three. Budgets oftentimes can go up a little bit. So if they say like, oh, mm, we really only wanted to spend X, it could be X plus, daddy gonna get money. Somebody's gonna get some extra money. If they go through and they don't, you know, they say like, you know, you give us this estimate and, and we just, you know, can you make the bridal bouquet for less? Don't do that. Go back and say, you don't need pew markers. Done. Saves you time saves them time, win-win. Don't say like, well, I said $150 for the bridal bouquet, I'll do it for 100 That's a waste of time. Her bridal, the bridal bouquet needs to be gorgeous. And that doesn't mean big, it means fresh, it means on time, perfect, all those simple things. You can always figure out those retail prices and get back to them. Item number 11, sell color and theme. Never sell specific varieties because that's when you're gonna get, oh my gosh, you're gonna get the snowstorm. And, and you're going to get the deer, and uh, you know something's going to um, be a horrible thing. I look at all the flowers that are on the stage right now. I've got at least one wedding, maybe two or three weddings, depending on the size of it. But I look at all that right now, and I say to my bride, I will design for you a wedding with beautiful, sustainably grown cut flowers from local sources and it will be a Mississippi garden effect in springtime. Oh. Now what am I going to do with it? I'm going to buy all my flowers from you guys and I'm going to chunk some greenery from outside because I don't find enough greenery from local growers. Okay, so we can talk about some of that as we go through. Sell colors. So a Mississippi garden, well what's a Mississippi garden? The same damn thing as California and Wyoming. <laughs> But my greenery makes it different, and the fact that I'm a Mississippian makes it Mississippi. And the mother is saying, oh, I'm so glad we went to gym. I feel good about this. Write the check. Thank you. <laughs> a Mississippi garden. A Saskatchewan garden. Yeah, it's desolate right now, but you know, by the same time, um, it would be beautiful in its season. Never sell, never, never, never sell stem counts. Never do that. Never do that. You sell effect, you sell theme, you sell color combinations. If you don't know color combinations, then you need to study that. And there are great resources out there. I'd like to think I contribute to some of that. Um, but learn those color combinations. Monochromatic color scheme, analogous, complementary, so on and so forth. All the color theory, it's out there. Don't trust everything that you see in a YouTube video. There's fantastic stuff out there and there's a lot of trash. Okay, there's a lot of people out there who really don't know what they're doing who claim it. Be careful, it's a buyer beware category. I'd like to think though you can trust a land grant university such as LSU, Mississippi State, oh my gosh, the incredible St. John Dole and his program the other day. Fantastic. That was good information. Live by it. Express with adjectives. Adopt best practices of post-design care and handling, water availability, and water quality. Make sure that your flowers are in a water source as much as possible and that you use proper treatments. 
Make sure that the water is the best quality possible. Use flower foods. They work and mix according to direction. That's something that Dr. Dole stressed, but a lot of florists don't do. They undermeasure because, like one florist said to me, it's like Jim using powder when I wash my clothes. I just put a little bit and it cleans them. These are not clothes. You know, these are respiring, living plant materials that are on their way out of this world. Don't hasten that. Don't make that faster. Make it slower. Refrigeration is oftentimes important, but it's not always necessary to design wedding flowers. We use a lot of vinyl, lots of plastic bags. It's awesome because it keeps freshness in. Think about when you buy your lettuce. Lettuce, in my day, was an iceberg thing wrapped in a piece of cellophane. The cellophane envelope, and it go <laughs> Remember those? Today, it's in the damn corsage box. Freshness in. And you pull that hydroponic lettuce out of there, it's a centerpiece. And I've said to some of the farmers markets, you know, folks like in Ocean Springs, Mississippi, Darwin, South Mississippi town, they have awesome farmers markets. Small but mighty. And you know, everybody goes there with their coffee, like, oh, what are we gonna have to eat tonight? You're going out to dinner, you're just here to see people. <laughs> lettuce that looks like a green rose displayed in glass containers with water. And I said to the vendor, can I have one of those for this demonstration? I put it in a vase and I tied some string around it and a pine cone, and it was gorgeous. It's a centerpiece you can eat. A centerpiece you can eat. We need to live that way. We need to take some of our fruits and vegetables, get them back on the table for beautiful effects. There's nothing new about that. Come on, you knew that. Avoid heat and use anti-transparent sprays. Item number eight, impact. Take care to consider avoiding um, small touches. Avoid small touches that take a lot of time without a lot of impact. You know, for instance, at our reception, Jim, at our reception, we're going to have 10 picnic tables and it's going to be outside and we have um, $100 to spend on our reception. So that means a $10 centerpiece. I, I don't do this in her face. My in, inside, my head is doing this. I'm illustrating to you. Oh no, 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 no! And I'm talking. Tell me about what you're serving. We're going to have um, a cake, and it's a sustainably baked cake. And um, we're going to serve some Gucci Mama punch with it. I don't know. And I say, on that cake, on that table. Why don't we take your $100 budget and put it into a really beautiful floral arrangement so your cake becomes the centerpiece of your reception. No music, no dancing, this sort of thing, but the cake is in the middle of all of this. Let's do $100 worth of nice floral arrangement because I don't have time and you don't have money. So let's make one arrangement that's beautiful and a focal point rather than something I gotta stretch and stretch and stretch. Remember, if I'm working with a stem of flowers that's four bucks and the centerpiece is ten dollars, I got mason jar, I got snapdragon. No water in it, you don't have enough money. <laughs> impact, impact. At a traditional wedding that is done on an altar, no matter what the faith, People are sitting like you all are. So give an audience something to see. At the reception, the same thing is true. Um, much of to uh, today's designs are simplistic, which, we met, which I told you about before. And there's a lot you can do to create them. Um, offer great products and great service, and they will come back. This darling girl owns a flower shop in Little Old Bay, St. Louis, which is where, where we live. And uh, she came to one of my workshops, and she's selling antiques out of her store, and then flowers. And she told me, Dr. Del Prince, Dr. Jim, Dr. Jim, um, my flower sales are surpassing my antique sales. And I said, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because a lot of times on antiques, the margin is so razor thin. You go to buy something, you'll say, like, I know that this is marked this, how much you want for it. We don't bargain on our flowers, though. It's a different sort. It's perishable. It's art. And uh, she came in, and for that program, we did headdresses, flower crowns, coronets, wreaths, 
head reads, many different terms. If you don't know the terms, a really good publication for you is the AIFD Guide to Floral Design. AIFD Guide to Floral Design. It's a hundred bucks. You shouldn't have a flower business without it. It's the best, and it's the best reference to floristry that's ever been written. It took us seven years meeting in smaller groups than this, but over weekends. A lot of it on our own nickel, and it's awesome. So we did this one and um, in, in our floral design studio at uh, Coastal, and she sat against one of the black backgrounds, and I said, no one leaves this class without at least taking some pictures. I want you to blog them, I want you to Facebook them, I want you to social media your guts out, because now's our time to be together. And she did that. She, isn't she a beautiful girl? And she made this um, via wire tape method. Um, I'm going to show you a quick one if I can ever get to it. And uh, she put this up on her Facebook page. First like was from a customer saying, will you make this for me for Frida Festival? Bay St. Louis, 6,000 people. And I said to my partner, how in the hell did we move here? I want Chicago. And this is 6,000 people, but it's an artistic community. And they love anything that is unique and novel. And they have these festivals every other weekend. Wine drinking and song and dance and living life to the fullest involves flowers. And she got a sale, or at least a potential sale, from the very first Facebook. That's impact. That's economic impact. And uh, there you go, from her educational workshop. You tell people that you've been to this. You tell people that you've been to this. You've had the best updates. The floriculture industry can provide you. That's value. Any questions before we get into some demonstrations? Go, 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 go. When do you start to ask them about their budget? Rita, are you going to talk about that? Yes. Next question. <laughs> Got the lights up, please. <laughs> Rita's going to have a fantastic presentation for y'all on the nuts and bolts of getting to some of that stuff. Okay, we'll move on from here. This is 12 gig. You got my email address. You got it on the handout. Email me if you've got a question. I'll tell you if it's good or not. No, I'm not sure. What I'm saying is I love the contact, though, because if you've got a question, I know that industry has that question, so that's pretty awesome. This is 12 gauge aluminum wire. This is sold in craft departments, at big box stores, as well as wholesale floors. You can get it a little 10 foot roll if you want it. You can get to, I don't know how it is, 25 feet, whatever, it doesn't matter. Soft and malleable, comes in different, different colors, okay? This is a jewelry tool. I'm gonna make just a quick and dirty little um, flower headdress. Uh, flower crown, whatever you want to call it. You know, they walk around the French Quarter and someone over there makes them out of dried flowers. And I look at this and I think, okay. <laughs> I'm glad that they're wearing flowers in their hair. Okay, this is called bouillon. Bouillon. This is a very light gauge wire. It's about a 38 gauge. You buy this at Wholesale Floris and you get a good size roll of it. It comes in different finishes. Silver, copper, gold. Raspberry, raspberry beret. <laughs> and I'm going to take um, some of the bouillon, and this is this is impossible for you to see. That's why I'm not doing boutonnieres for you up here. Have to have a camera. Have to have my GoPro. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to take a little length of the bouillon wire, and I wrap it around the beginning of the headdress like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight count, Broadway. Wrapped around eight times tightly. Phyllis Diller, Dusty Miller. One, two, three, four. Sweet William, so fresh. Cut into little bunches. Just that on there. Yeah, it's called non-torturous floral design. You don't have to wire and tape everything to make a flower crown for a flower girl. Society of American Florists has a publication that they sponsor called Floral Management. I love that, and I use that as the title for our degree program at MSU, Floral Management. Not floral design. Sounds easy. Floral Management, it's business. 
And when I um, and, and in this particular publication, floral management. And Rita, what uh, what which one is this? Um, okay, and, and in their uh, publication that just came out, Floral Management, they gave stats on weddings. And they said average American wedding, floral cost $1,800. And that sounds a lot like what we do at the University of Florida. It's located at Mississippi State University. We have a flower shop on our campus. Oldest flower shop in the city of Starkville. It's over 80 years old. Is what you're making flat on one side? Yes. But you could do both. You could do either way. Because you know why? It's cool. It's not science, it's art and design. Oh, well, the diagnosis and the seven geraniums, et cetera, are they taped or they just cut fresh stems? You're not going to taste fresh or they're not ready. <laughs> you only have to do that when you work with the larger flowers, like the girl had up here, Gerberas, open roses. Those are wired and taped, and then taped on to the same back. I don't have the time to make that. I'd love to, but you've got to come and see me at MSU. Come to that summer workshop. We're going to take eight people, and that's all, because I don't want all of you there. <laughs> question. Any other questions? Yeah, yes. Sorry. Um, would you use material that would last all day? Yes. Right. I like that. Oh, yeah. Status. Wait, what do you grow? Everything. Gombrina is what I would usually oh, put in there. Fantastic. And it'll dry. And I wouldn't tell them I'm going to use Gombrina. I would tell them I'm using garden flowers, whatever. But when you present it and put it on that flower girl, which by the way, in that that information that came out this week, average price of the of the the flowers for the flower girl, $75. I like a hundred for a flower girl. That means something to wear and something to carry. And a hundred dollars is so much better than 75. And when you're installing it on that little girl, I like to call it an installation because you know those little kids that could be wired and fired. Um, you you know when you're putting it on there, you tell the adult this will dry and it will be the same. Color, always selling what you do. Always selling. This is called gomfrina. It looks like clover, but it's not. It's better. <laughs> okay, so here's how I'm going to finish it off. You guys, it's not rocket science, so don't get crazy about this and say, like, how did he do that? Uh, whatever. One, two, three, four. I'm going to just take this and I make a loop around one side and I bring the other end this way. Okay, so if I'm the wire, that, um, if I'm the main number 10 gauge aluminum wire, the bullion is going around me in a lasso and coming out this way, that gives me two ends. Remember the day that you used to buy a loaf of bread and it came with a twist -em? Yep. Yeah. Many moons ago. It's the same kind of thing. I take those two ends and I twist it together like this. Great little pair of shears. <coughs> Versatile. Uh, because they cut flowers for this purpose, and I don't cut flowers that go into water with scissors and no. home. And uh, there you go. How long did that take? And I was talking the whole time. You slammed it up on that little girl. How that? We're gonna pass some of this stuff around. Thanks, Nick. Okay, moving on. Clean water. Clean water. Clean water. Of a bubble bowl or a little uh, ivy bowl. They're the ones that come up that look like they were your mom's or your granny's and they got the little ruffle on the outside. And people look at those and they think, oh, I can't use that. It just doesn't have the clean lines on me. Get over it. They're a buck a piece at Dollar Tree, um, wholesale florists, and there, a lot of these big box entities have online presence and you can order that stuff in bulk. They'll ship it to you or you can go to the location and pick it up. Boom. That's good money. 
And you could stock up on something like that. So what happens if you stock, oh my gosh, if you stock up on something and you, oh my gosh, well, <laughs> I'm salivating here. Um, what happens if you stock up on stuff and you've got a lot of it? you got to be creative with it, but that's a good way to buy. If you can buy several of something, you're going to get a better price. And if you get a better price, that means your margin has the potential to be bigger. So if I find that vase and it retails for uh, normally a dollar, but I buy enough that they give it to me for 80 cents, my markup on it is still going to be as if it were a dollar. Not with me, yes. We don't always have to pass along savings to the customer. You know why? You're as clumsy as I am. We're going to bust up all that stuff like nobody's business. And so that shrinkage has got to come from somewhere. He's selecting his colors now. You know what? I just slam this stuff together with no rhyme. If it looks pretty, I'll move on with it. Kind of an analogous color scheme. Move on. Yes. Okay. So what am I going to do to make this? Well, he's got two vases here, and he's got a sharp knife here. We cut all of our herbaceous stems with the knife. We go on. Oh, God. I've got like 30 minutes. Let's roll. So I've got the bunchy material first. So I'm going to use, it's kind of looking like the Sweet William Show. Um, up here, but it's it's a good one. It's a lot of color. Kind of amazing. <laughs> Halfway there. <laughs> Halfway there. Okay, so let's drop in a couple of these little dudes. Hi. And you know, don't, it, it's it's floral design. It's it's and, and it's commercial. So don't stand there and sweat over it and take forever because there's 18 million things that you have to do anyway. This is just a part of it. Look at that, Rita. <laughs> you know, good floriculture product. I've got some lime material here, and I really don't like to use lime material in a round arrangement. Round bubble, round flowers, round table, round tablecloth, round designer, round, 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 round. Repetition of form is a good way to go. But you know what? You can add line to it too. And we don't have to worry about it. This is what this is a nice little centerpiece here, a few stems of flowers. You notice here I've got two relatively large mass flowers on either side. Nice centerpiece, goes all the way around, decorative on all sides. Nothing really stellar about the design work, but just something cool, wedding colors and this sort of thing. But a big thing to remember is when you've got two very focal large flowers, never place them on the same horizontal plane. You see how this smaller ball, Dahlia, is a little bit uh, taller than this more open variety here? Diagonals, when you use two. You know, people say, now I thought you were supposed to use three. Well, she won't have money for three. <laughs> She's got money for two, and we're going to Paris, right? We're not coming back to Baton Rouge you know, for our vacation. So we need to kind of watch our profits. Remember that, plant kingdom. There's always going to be something dominant over the other one, right? Flower, flower. Animal kingdom, horizontal planes, eyebrows, eyes, nostrils. Everything is on the same horizontal plane. Now, I'm designing with, um, I'm going to design with water here. Uh, a good effect, for, especially for those of you that are doing supermarkets and long-lasting designs. This is beyond the wedding now. I can make something like this on Thursday or Friday without refrigeration and just deliver it on Saturday. That's no big problem. I can, with refrigeration, I would, with the, as fresh as these flowers are, Monday or Tuesday, get it in the cooler, let it sweat for a couple of hours out on the table, let that condensation dry. Those people are going to be just as married as anyone else, and it's going to be really fantastic. But for supermarket work, you want to use the A and B base method. You need two. One is to work in, and one is what you display in. Both of these have high quality floral food water solution in them, okay? Containing the necessary components that Dr. Dole talked us about. This, though, was my work base, and it's got little leaves in it, it's got soil, it's got organic material in it. This is fresh solution. This is the absolute best 
floral arrangement in the United States of America. Not because the design is great, but because the flowers are fresh and it's in high quality water, which is the proven by science to be the best water for it. That's value. Now you're talking about holding solutions and all these things that you want to, you know, that, that you should be using with your floriculture product. You're having value, y'all. And you need to tell people that's what we're doing here. When you add value, it commands a better price. Are you with me? So, um, you know, we like the, we like the uh, aluminum wire. It starts to become very versatile. And uh, there's so much more that we can do with it. Let go. Uh, so we can create, you know, what we refer to as armatures. Did I hear somebody say armature? Yeah, armature. It's an armature. It's a structure. That helps to control stem placement. We did these in cube shapes in our workshop the other week. But instead of using something that you have to buy, use something that you grew. Corkscrew willow in an armature. Designers are hot for this. Now, I know that Jenny, Jenny, where's Jenny? Jenny Love. I didn't even get to meet her. It's a crime. Well, I want to tell her how fantastic her presentation is and how I'm going to start praying to her at night. <laughs> and you know, that's an excellent example of a wedding florist who makes it work for her. And she said, you only need a few of these because they're so prolific. But look at this. This becomes, oh my gosh, it's a, it's a nest. It's a bird. It's a hat. But it also becomes something that we can chuck into a container that controls stem placement. That's Japanese Ikebana Kubari. Ah, Ikebana. That's expensive. <laughs> So lots of stuff you can do, and you know, that's why you might need six of these. Buy the case of them and come up with various means of decorating them. I use this as a, as a little uh, background for um, my office. Uh, but uh, you know, that, like I said, that little ivy bowl that's got the ridge, it's perfect for something like this. Because now, look at the personality. Imagine this with those poppies, poppies and ranunculi. Pretty fantastic. You'll make it look different for every event. And it's inexpensive, and it will make you money, and you mark up the hell out of it. Let's move on here um, to this product. This is an, uh, a product that's on the market. A couple different manufacturers make them. It's one of my favorites. It's called a ring holder. It's a wreath form. Ring holder. It's a wreath form. This one has fresh floral foam in it, but you can buy them, of course, with um, silk and dry floral foam or what have you. I like to take it and overwrap it using waterproof tape. Don't use stem wrap for this. This is waterproof tape. Some designers use the paper waterproof tape for corsage making. Really, uh, really advanced florists don't really use a lot of stem wrap anymore because they're using a lot more adhesive. But I do use the waterproof tape spiraled around it in its dry state after I beveled some of it, sculpt the flower foam. So in its dry state, I cut away a little bit of it to get a more rounder effect. Because just because it's a mechanic doesn't mean it's ready for designing. You do some extra work with it. And then I spiral this over it because if I jam this full of garden roses, it's a lot of material and it's gonna need that cage to help to make this intact. And wouldn't it be nice to have a lot of um, wedding floral design work that's you know just tons and tons of flowers and it's not reality. So this is Aspidistra elasure. Uh, Aspidistra is a staple in many flower shops because it's awesome. There's so much you can do with it. You know, you can bend it, you can curl it, uh, and a lot of um, a lot of the West Coast designers love to use it for different things. You can tailor it like this. So you know, if you're a designer, you design, and that means a little playtime too which is a wonderful thing. So I can quickly cover this inexpensively if needed, just with a quick little placement like this. And this is something that can be done um, well ahead of time in, um, in, in floral design work, in commercial floral design work. Okay, so I would use a few, um, I would use a few greeting pins, and I've got them, but I just, you know, I've got to move on. 
So I'm going to, you improvise, right? So this is the aspidistra petiole. This is my son, aspidistra petiole. <laughs> Fast car. This came from next door. Nobody, nobody brought foliage. To, I mean, we've got beautiful, you know, like tender foliage, but a lot of this is like Florida-grown stuff, and it may be kind of hard to compete with a larger farm on something like that. And you can make your own wire pins with scraps. So a little this and that. You know, we'll go fill this thing in. You want to see it done? Okay. <laughs> So you know when you make something like this, you have to remember it's a table center piece, or as do we say in Canada, table center. Yes, we do. I love that term so much better. <laughs> what do you call it? Centerpiece. I know. <laughs> a table center. Clustered together. Okay, so I am a professional floral designer and I use a knife and I'm right-handed, so the knife goes into my right hand and I never have to put it down because it becomes the sixth finger of my right hand. And that speeds up your work because we don't have a lot of time. You don't have a lot of time in professional floristry. And remember, we said we wanted to go to bed tonight. Okay, so that green leaf took up a lot of space. I don't know what it looks like. You see it. I don't care. But you get the idea here of, of what I'm talking about here. Mixing some of these really hot jewel, you know, orange. This is a red-orange analogous color scheme going on. What can you do with this? Groom's cake, bride's cake, bride and groom together, photos. So you sell photo, uh, focal areas. You know, people today at weddings, they don't just get a photographer, they got a videographer, they got a painter. I mean, you, know, you know that trend? Went to um, my cousin's wedding in New Orleans last year. There's a painter there. What the hell? Painting scenes from the wedding. So, you know, we're always kind of framing things. This is a cake stand I stole from catering. We'll give it back to them. But again, <laughs> this gives you the idea of cupcake tower, uh, figurines, in sympathy work, which I think we should talk about someday, urns of the deceased. Fabulous. And we've lost sympathy work because so much of our, so much of our work, uh, so, so, many, so many of our traditions have changed you know, over the years. And we've really lost a lot of sympathy work in the United States. This is, I think, a really great, a great product. This is styrofoam, very lightweight. If the ship is sinking, you knock people over to get this. This is a personal flotation device. It is hydrophobic, which means it will not absorb water. That doesn't mean you can't use it with fresh materials. It's just that they have to be tough or they're going to die quickly. But I like this one because it's reinforced with cardboard on the back. A company called Floracraft out of Ludington, Michigan makes these. Floracraft sells a lot of their product to mass markets, Michaels, Walmart, and such. And the, these companies, the retailers, won't stock everything, but they also sell to wholesalers. And if you go to a wholesale florist and they don't have what you're looking for, you can call the company and tell them what you want. They'll ship it to the wholesaler because it's a guaranteed sale. See what I'm saying? So Floracraft is a really, really good one. But I like this one that's reinforced. Without the reinforcement, this is much more breakable. Now, styrofoam doesn't biodegrade. It degrades, but it doesn't biodegrade, which means you have to reuse it, which means you've got to go back and pick this up. I don't care. I'll go do it for something like this, because I can make something like this with it. This is made with ligustrum that came from next door. And it took me about an hour, a little bit better than an hour, to do all of this. This would be incredible with camellia foliage, magnolia, Dee Dee Blanchard magnolia that has the brownish undersides. Imagine that, two of these on the door of the church. What will the market bear for pricing that? And you could put bows on them, you could add flowers to it, or you could just have this incredible you know, Greco-Roman inspired design that looks like something you would see in high style uh, social media. So, wedding work, yes. Sympathy work, yes. 
gentleman's birthday party at a wonderful restaurant in the French Quarter, his cake in the middle of this? Yes. How's it done? S pins. I posted all of all of my stuff to my face to Facebook uh, right before I came on. And uh, a florist friend of mine, uh, Carrie Hill, said that looks like a lot of S pins. I said, Yeah, it is. It is. But you know, I think a really fantastic product. Take a can of Design Master 24 karat gold spray paint to this, and spray paint the heck out of it, and it will be gilt. That's extra. That's extra because it takes product, but it takes time. It takes knowledge. You know, see, I had to study Greco-Roman architecture in order to design your wedding flowers. But it's not going to look like somebody down the street who doesn't know what I know. Five minutes, an hour, profitable, both of them. We learning? You ready to go home? Okay. You know, doesn't it? Oh my gosh, I just looked at that on the ground. It looks like a memorial. Like, oh, Nancy Reagan just, uh, <laughs> it just occurred. It was on, on our mind. I was talking to some floristry friends about that who are, um, who are talking, who are um, familiar that worked in Washington, D.C. And some of them worked for the people who designed flowers for Washington events, not necessarily at the White House. And we were talking about the styles of the first ladies. And, you know, Nancy Reagan, uh, the Adolfo, you know, red, uh, formal, and suit, and also her floral design style, which was very much that English garden of the 1980s, which I think is another timeless style. And speaking of timeless, straw wreaths. Anybody else in here been in the floral industry since the 70s like me? Okay, good. Um, so a straw wreath, these arrive overwrapped with green vinyl or clear vinyl. I love this product. And you know, they'll say like, Jim, you know, when you make these though, why don't, you know, this is gonna shed. That's the best part. That's the best part. Because, you know, don't you know that we use hay bales now to create compost? <laughs> That's natural. This is an awesome product, and I love it when it's a little bit more rough and rugged. And you know what? They want petals and things to throw. How about straw? He and Mary did a barn today. Why not throw straw? So um, it, we had a bridal show uh, the other week in, in Columbus, Mississippi, and a friend of mine got in touch with me. She said, I, a Southern Belle lady, and she said, Jim, I'm just appalled because um, they said on this wedding program, the, the florist said, we can even make the church look like a barn. <laughs> and you know, that's, that's style today. You know, that's a trend. It may not be something we like, but by the same token, it's something we could deliver on, and I could certainly do this on the doors of a church. Now, these are reinforced with a wire in between, so you can have an oval shape if you like that. It becomes landscape portrait and uh, we can design flowers on it. That's a big page. So let me just kind of visit with you a little bit about this product. Um, if you're not familiar with it, Fresh Flower Foam um, is available in many different permutations and cages and such. And one of the major manufacturers is uh, sponsoring or, or telling us um, about the uh, improvement to their product. And the improvement to their product is such that um, it's biodegradable. And that's really pretty cool. Um, it, it takes a while, but it is biodegradable. And the cages are recyclable. Okay, so we've got this thing here, and it's a big, heavy cage. But sometimes when you're decorating archways over an entrance or arches over a, a bridal couple, um, you have the need to use various mechanics. So there's nothing like a cable tie to help this uh, little guy get together very, very quickly. So I'm going to just take the cable tie, and I'll bring it around the back of the wreath, and then I'm going to bring it through the network of the cage. The Mississippi State University way, we used to tell our students this stuff all the time, you know, got to get their attention somehow, um, is three points of attachment. The Mississippi State University way of securing these is three points of attachment. So cable tie over here, nice and taut, and one on this side, and one on the, oops, thank you, and one on the other. 
Association especially, cut flower growers, I'm so happy to be here. You guys are, you guys are it. <laughs> happening, making it happen. Think of how many dreams, how many dreams are in those fields, you know? You know, the hopes and fears of all the years. It's awesome what you do. I'll tell you, and, and I'm completely serious about this, uh, being in the floral industry for a long time, I'll have moments where um, you're taking a wedding order, and it's like, you know, a 20-year-old. And uh, she's young and lively, and she's happy, and she's easy to work with, and her mother's delighted, and they know that they're, they're, you're going to do the best job ever on their wedding flowers. And then, you know, you get done with that consultation, and in walks a family who just lost a 20-year-old. You know, it's tough. It's a tough profession to be in. But if you engage yourself from the standpoint of, there's nothing I can do to help these people in my power other than to make the best flowers that they've ever seen. It's comforting. It's comforting. It's proven that flowers comfort the bereaved. And so we should send sympathy flowers. And I hope that you do too. And it can be something as simple as going out in the field and making this and taking it to their house. It means a lot. So three points of attachment using cable ties, very innocuous, and I could create a floral arrangement in this. I don't think I have the time though. So you just got to see a mechanic and how it would be done. This could be attached this way, it could be this way. Where would you use some where would you use something like this? Barn doors church doors, reception doors, man, that's six, that's, yeah, that's, that's six different places at a hundred bucks a pop, because that's what I would sell that green green for, I want a hundred for that, maybe, that's just me, but if you feel like you can only get $25 for it, I think that's a lot of work for that, and if you feel like you can't sell it, you know, there's always Avon, <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. It's entrepreneurial. You gotta, you gotta sell what your market wants. And if your market doesn't want stuff like that, then move on. Move on. You only got one life to live. Okay, so let's talk about big mechanics now. Did you know that floral foam is made in different sizes? This is Florocraft's designer block large, six by nine by twelve. This is like, I think this is the equivalent of six blocks of foam. It's a lot of foam. So if you're creating an urn arrangement, you might need something like that. Um, if you're uh, making another arrangement, uh, then you might need something you know, a little bit smaller like this one. This is equivalent to about two. Uh, this is four and a quarter by six by nine. Just the big thing here is the creativity starts with the basis, right? It's not just here. It's what's going on underneath, and that's the hard part. And that's the hard part about learning floristry, as we learned last night. You can see demonstrations like this for 18 hours, but you know what? I think we all got it. What we need to learn is what Pinterest doesn't show us, and that's the foundation for design. It has to be done correctly for post-harvest freshness. It has to be stable. So um, let's say, for instance, you've got a really big urn and I went to Michael's last night, and I didn't buy a big urn, I bought this. I was feeling country last night, and so I did this. But you know, if this is your container, are you really going to fill this with floral foam and try to deliver it? It's going to be 150 pounds, and that's not good. So you can always take um, an inexpensive charger plate or similar and a block and work with something like this. And you could create this kind of look without making your mechanics very heavy. I was helping someone with a, a, a wedding, a, a big, beautiful wedding. It was all white and cream flowers. It was so pretty. And um, I said, what are those concrete urns for? And he said, that's what's going on the altar. And I said, who's going to take those? You. My rate went up after that because, um, you know, the hospital stay. We've got to do things that make it easier for us to do. So let's talk about floral foam as we move along here. Fresh flower foam um, needs to be hydrated by what we refer to as the free float method. The free float method. Free float method means you take the brick of foam and you place it on top of the water and allow it to sink at its own rate of speed 
For a standard brick, it's between 30 and 60 seconds. For these larger bricks, it's like a minute, two minutes. Never, ever force fresh floral foam below the water line and watch the bubbles and think it's hydrating and think you're cool because you're just creating what we refer to as dry core. Dry core means the interior of the foam is dry while the exterior looks wet. When you impale your flowers into that foam, it's like arranging in sand and they will go down, but you may not see that until it's too late. On time and perfect. It's easy as long as it's on time and perfect. With something like this, we would take this brick of foam and um, I would use waterproof tape at half inch, Ugh, not quarter inch. But this is all I could find last night at Michael's. It don't have to be pretty at this stage of the game, it just has to hold. And don't scrimp on mechanics, because they are your insurance policy. And you take this from here, I could get 800 bucks worth of retail flowers in this. That when mother walks in, she's what's the phrase we like? You've outdone yourself. I have, and now I'm going to Paris. So let's see um, an effect, another effect here, uh, because I want to recycle this. This is an interesting container that um, these have, are on the market now, and these little containers that are biodegradable. I guess like within a few months, I've, I've not done anything with this, but within a few months, um, this biodegrades in a landfill. So that's kind of interesting. I don't want it to biodegrade too fast, right? But I do believe in using chicken wire for floral design work, and I believe in using floral foam. I think that that's all good. But you know, we're not here for three weeks. We're only here for an hour and a half in this, and there's only so much I can do. So let me, let me just kind of show you a little bit about what I do with this. Here's my waterproof tape. Edge of the container is dry and relatively clean. I dry, dry, dry. I sculpted the foam, rounded off the edges. It helps to disguise it more easily. And you can always take these bits of the fresh flower foam and you can use them in other design work or you can discard them. Again, on something this large, half inch width rather than the quarter inch would be better. Over the rim of the container to a length of approximately half an inch. We don't want to see the tape and we don't want to see the foam because these are considered non-decorative mechanics. We like to see wire. That's a decorative mechanic. Okay, now the bride is going to be going, oh my gosh, the bride's going down the aisle in five minutes. That's, that's a problem. I'm going to take, and I add an insurance policy around the rim of the container like this. Not too high, just right at the rim of the container. It helps to make sure that the little tabs will stay in place because they won't. It's like right now it's fighting me. And when you get, if you get into a situation that's difficult, use duct tape. Works great. Okay, or add fresh flower food solution to this. I'm not in a sink right now, so bear with me. Add, oh, oh. Okay, order a placement in a floral design, uh, more or less a traditional line mass design. Line, then mass, then filler. Placement number one. This is a three-sided arrangement that's going to go in an altar. Placement number two, placement number three. Just like what a lot of the textbooks have shown us forever. Note though, because this is a floral design that has a non-decorative back, Placement number one is made two-thirds to three-quarters of the way back in the floral foam. Don't make the mistake that I made when I made this for the very first time thinking I was creative. And start everything in the center because you will lose physical balance and the design will do this all the time. Boom. And then you stand it back up. Boom. There's no way to fix bad. You've got to redo it. And just keep in mind, everybody started somewhere. We're all sharing all of our deepest, darkest secrets. From here on out, it's just really adding floral places. Look at that. 
You use a Snapdragon that's bent this way, designers love this, don't worry. Good designers use it like this so it looks fresh, bad use it like this so it looks like it's dead. Fresh, dead, fresh. <laughs> And you know, I was thinking about I was thinking about the talk um, we heard about the um, tulips, and how the tulips were um, short because was the fertilization was incorrect. And um, I thought, oh, let me see them darling little midget tulips <laughs> because I think we could take them out of the soil, wash them, and put them in a bowl like this and charge five times for them. So don't feel like sometimes when things go badly that all is lost. You get hooked up with them. You email me. I'll cheer you up. <laughs> Order of placement. Now notice too that some of my line material really juts out. A big arrangement that goes up uh, in, in a church or you know a, an area where it needs to be very focal um, needs uh, needs ex extra depth built into the design. So deeper orange here, deeper orange here, but a little bit lower in the design. It's really fun doing this in, in front of Piggy Floors. I've had some ladies, you know, they'll come to a full design presentation, they design 20 times better than I would ever hope to be able to do, and they'll say, you got a hole over there, Del Prince, just over to the rack, just go. <laughs> and, and garden club members who, um, oh my gosh, design with flowers beautifully. Breathtaking. Okay, so order placement line, then filler, then um, line, then mass, then filler. Line, then mass, then filler. So I use Snapdragons first. This is like Easter morning, Rita. This bucket would be completely filled with water. So important to do. Look at that. It's loaded. And the florets are just wonderful for boutonniere and corsage work because they're fragrant. Well, that's a snapdragon again. Yeah, no. Okay. We take better care of our flowers when we have the time, but um, we, uh, we need to move on. Gosh, can I take this home? <laughs> Okay, so um, I have to jump around a little bit when I'm making things, and I had this flown in. So excited about this. Just arrived, just before, like an hour, I think it came in, just before the program. Ligustrum. The bold face line. I came in next door, too. <laughs> See, this is the part of the, of the wedding setup where the music is playing on your boombox or your, you know, whatever you brought. Look at that curve. That's kind of cool. On each central cruise. Up high on the left, low on the right. Zooming through. Just classic floristry that I learned from Bill Hickson in Cleveland, Ohio, Ralph Null in Mississippi, and parts in between. So we use our knife for the soft herbaceous stems and uh, pruning shears on the woodies. Give us more woodies. Give us more woodies. You know, like stuff like ilex, winterberry, it don't have to be all packed up with berries to be pretty. You know, it could be the long gangly stems with like eight berries on it. That's pretty too. You just, have, you know, people have to kind of know what they're getting. So, um, Tennis Clifton uh, and I spent a day, I think it was early December, I said, can I come over, we just do a little product development day? And she's like, I wish that this guy would leave me alone. And um, we, uh, no, uh, we, uh, we just kind of wandered her property and used wandered her property and we just did pine and uh, stuff. 
you know, just stuff from the property. And we made a wreath and a topiary. Just value-added things that take time. Okay, so I've added some line material <clears throat> to the design. And I stand back here and I see a hole in it and I say, I'm not done yet. I still have time to get this done. So I'm going to add some mass flowers to it, the largest round flower at the focal area. And then I'm going to zigzag my way upward using what we call triangulation of placement technique. You find triangles, triangulation of placement technique. That, that technique is worth $300,000 because it speeds up your, your time, speeds up the time. So for instance, I look at this and I know I need something over here. So from this Snapdragon to this stock, I could place a yellow dahlia. Boom, fast. Designing with flowers is a series of design decisions, and they have to be made quickly and relatively accurately. But, you know, your standards may be higher than what they, your clients are, and that's a good place to be because you don't want it to be the other way around. Mr. Noel used to refer to, uh, to us, uh, floral design is just nothing but a series of organized chaos. You're taking all natural material and you're organizing it into geometric form. Geometry. And you can see some high-end designers who, you know, use 18 stems of phalaenopsis and hydrangeas. It's a mound arrangement. It's just on a stand. You can do that. My students in PSS 2343, baby floral design, could do that by the second week. It's just a different flower. But what's great about that designer is we respect her because her workshops are $2,500. And she does really, really pretty work. So if you find something that's got a nice curve, that's good. And sometimes we think, oh, maybe the foliage is a little too heavy. You can do this. Where you take and remove some of the materials. And you make a lighter, airier approach to it. This is getting hot again. Light and airy is the avant-garde designers are bringing back what is referred to as transparency. Government transparency, economic transparency. <laughs> They're bringing it back in floral design, and we're seeing arrangements that you can see through again. So a technique like this follows suit with that, where I remove the leaves. You know what this technique is called? Removal. <laughs> That's a transparent comment. And then, of course, when we use it, use it so we can see that little curve. So we're... we're um, we're following suit. Okay. We're over by six minutes. It's cutting into your lunch break. Should I stop now and, and then we can answer questions? Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. You want to see yeah. Could you come up front and help me? You're going to just hand me stuff because this bride is getting antsy. You're going to take those. And... Um, Face. Because PJ's across the street, don't cut it. Yeah, so we take the biggest ones first. Like the way you think. That's a money flower. Mama want to see that. So the money goes up the goes in front, right? It goes in the front of the design. Low to the left, high to the right. You can do this. Sink the placements down deep. We use the buds. They help to add dimension to the design, and they cost something, too. So deeper colors, we've got to be careful with those because from a distance, that's gone. So we'll limit those those deeper colors. For distance viewing, you want light, advancing colors. So understanding the color wheel, color temperature, 
and advancing and receiving color is of the utmost importance to really give value. Again, it doesn't matter if they're spending 10,000 or 250. Value, value, special day, best ever wedding, and all those hashtag things. <laughs> And of course, if you use fresh water food solutions and proper hydration techniques, you don't need to wire these. Um, the end flowers to carry, though, that's Rita's department. Um, that's something a little bit different there. Imagine that for a head table. Money on the vine. Daddy's little girl. I mean, what's better than that? Uh, you want to sink those placements into the foam, a minimum of an inch, but on something like this, I like it much deeper. The critical feature is, where are you going? <laughs> Wait a minute. Didn't I say we were getting drinks after work tonight? <laughs> One of the best bosses I worked for when I was at Ohio State used to call shop meetings, which meant Saturdays you stayed after work because we all headed to the bar. Choke. <laughs> Let's do a little... Uh, uh, Jim, I can see the foam in that. Watch how this kind of changes some of the personality of the design. Makes it, you know, like some, some of the cathedrals and larger churches really need massive, you know, designs. Of course, you can always tell your client whatever you want to sell. There's a massive structure, architectural detail, thousands. <laughs> <laughs> and you notice as these go in, they radiate outward. So that's part of organizing the chaos. Radial flow. This is a radial design. In uh, European floristry, this would be referred to as decorative. In American and British floristry, it's called a mass design because we're massing our materials together. Can you imagine this not only for a wedding, but for an anniversary party at a country club? Mmm. That's living. Triangulation of placement. Flowers only used if they can be seen. If they're hidden too deeply, then it's just not really a good investment. Like this one. I hope that I've uh, imparted some information to you today and maybe you feel like, hey, you know, this is possible. I'd like to get my feet wet. I'm going to follow his eight-step program. Remember his eight count. Liza says eight count. And uh, tell your clientele what you want them to be ready for and get them prepared for your consultation. We're just going to take you through all that today and create win-win situations with the great products that you grow every day. Thank you all very much. And don't forget your cards, please. Thank you. Any other questions? There's a box in the back for your cards. Judy, yes? The flower crown. I had the worst time with my first one attaching to the little girl's hair because she had this baby wispy. Yeah. Any suggestions? Bobby pins and, and enough of them. Okay. That's what I did. Yes, I just felt like it was, they kept wanting to do that. But yeah. Anyway, Bobby pins, I, I think, are better than combs and anything else I've heard okay. of. Okay. Next question. One more, one more time. 
whatever the market will bear. Seriously. Seriously. It's beautiful because of Rena's flowers, right? Organized chaos. I just organized it, but I sold it. Now, how much, did, how much would you sell it for? I don't know. A lot. 300? Oh, I, I would. Yeah, you know, I think in, in that ballpark, I'd really like a little bit more for it because I would like to put a little bit more foliage in it, a little drapey drapey, some nice foliage coming down to the floor. Now it looks like 400, 500. It's on a pedestal, 550, six. <laughs> Side pieces, 1,200. And keep on building from there. Yeah, anything else? Yeah. On that flower crown, are you gonna put anything to hold it, like ribbon or anything on the back, or is it just that? that bobby pins. Just bobby pins. You can do ribbon, you can do all that great kind of stuff, but bobby pins would, would hold that. So don't make it a complete circle. You don't have to, but you can. Yeah, it could be half, and a half can be beautiful, spiraled around the back, wind it up in a serpentine and get it through her chignon. You know, if, if you go in and you say, I'm the designer, when I bring your flowers to you, we're going to work it up, girl, and we're going to have champagne together. That's $100. That's $150. You know. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yes? Yeah. It's like you constantly have to train around where to get the mossy stuff like that kind of thing. Get ready to write. Yes. The nature of things is the name of the company. The nature of things. The gentleman's name is David Mills. He's incredible, and he, like Tannis, are part of our beautiful things from Mississippi initiative, and he makes Bark covered everything, and he's your go-to for it. He also harvests Jackson vine from their family property up in northwest Mississippi. He's about an hour and 15 minutes south of Memphis, and he FedExes everything out, or you can pick it up or whatever. The nature of things. Anyone else? All right, have a great lunch.